Please welcome Victoria LeBond. Victoria. imagine a gigantic triangular prism and you were then to imagine light shining through that prism what happens is as that light bends it refracts and through that refraction our eyes see color often though we just see the white light but through that bending all of a sudden the full rainbow is exposed but so often in our business and our lives we get caught up and we're just blue or green or yellow or red and we think well if I'm a mom I have to be pink and if I'm a business owner I have to wear a suit we're an insurance company we have to do these kinds of forms really do you where does innovation begin Sir Isaac Newton in the 1600s did this experiment with light where he took that beam and he shined it through and out came these colors but he did the reverse which not many people know and he took all the colors and he said, if I shine it through that prism, will out come one single light? And indeed, that's the case. If you were to take all of the talents in your organization and shoot them out, you might find you have just one voice. Not a disorganized organization, but a pure one. If you run a business, if you run a team, if you run a family, your job to be a great visionary with looking is to say, what are we not seeing? How can we take the obvious and turn it? How do we look in a new way at the people, at the opportunities? How do we take our business and change it to something extraordinary? 87% of people interviewed in business say that they would rate listening as one of the top three skills. Or as an Italian friend of mine said, the Blackberry, it's become the new rosary. <laughs> So let's do some training. We'll do a micro learning session now. So here's someone speaking, the vertical line, and most of the time, we just interrupt them. The next type of listening is what I would call pouncing. And pouncing is when you know you're not supposed to interrupt. So you wait, and 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 the minute they're done speaking, you jump in and you say what you want to say. The emotion it produces is not a positive one. And so consciously we think, well, it's okay, at least I didn't interrupt. I waited for them to be done. But in truth, the person thinks you weren't even listening to what I was saying. And they know you were just waiting to make your comment or ask your question or say your point. People are so busy talking about their product or service that they forget to listen to what the client wants. And they forget to listen to the language the client uses. How do you bring what you love back into your life or into work? As we often think there's work and there's play. Well, I go do my hobbies and I have my fun and then I go to work. But it, we're an integrated world now and there's extraordinary opportunity. And if you're going to run a healthy, well organization, you have to let people bring their passions and you have to start with yourself. What are the passions you're not bringing in? And I want to give you some examples and then I'm going to have two volunteers come up here and show me with you how this exercise works. He loves football. So now Marie and I are going to brainstorm ways he can bring football into work. You could, when you're stuck in a meeting and you can't come up with any ideas, put the football on the table and say, what would the football say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you love motorcycle riding, why don't you have a photograph of motorcycles? Because I guarantee it's going to get more comments from people and people are going to say, oh, that's so cool. Because you have these colors inside of you and we feel like we can't show them off because I'm an executive. I have to do like this or I'm in sales. I got to wear a Blackberry on my belt and wear Dockers. And if I'm between the ages of 30 and 35, I gotta wear my hair spiky and crisscrossed. <laughs> What's the limitation you put on yourself? I know a woman who loves the Oscars. And you know what she does every year at Academy Award time? She rolls out a red carpet by her desk. <laughs> Do what you love, razz your berry. So you say, how do I take what I love and bring it on the stage into my office, into my meetings, into my family? Because your kids are dying to see your colors come out. But you know for whatever reason, it's the right decision. And it's not until you have the courage to step into it and stay there that you see the possibilities that were meant for you. How can you take what is otherwise considered a commodity and engage your unique brilliance 
to transform that commodity into an art. So are you ready to celebrate your brilliance? One, two, three, hit it.